Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rusty78609 from a cool campground here. This is uh, Fishers of Men Ranch, and it's about 50 degrees outside. Not much wind, but it's a nice day. I just went out for a short walk. Just got in. I never turned the heat on. It's about 62 degrees inside. But what I've got here, I've got a comment that'll lead into some other stuff. <clears throat> just says, hi, Rusty. Been following your adventure since your Prius camping days. And he said he wanted to thank me for my many experiences. Uh, it says, since you have logged so many traveling miles traveling, I was wondering if sometime you would consider doing a video sometime of your experience with how to handle vehicle breakdowns on the road. If you have experienced several or very few, do you recommend a roadside assistance program, etc.? And well, let's start with the beginning of this thing. I'll try to answer these as I go. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, as far as vehicle breakdowns in my career of RVing, and I've had travel trailers, four or five different types, and and I've got a Class C <clears throat> motorhome, a Thor Four Winds 22E, and but as far as breakdowns in my whole career of 25 plus years, uh, I can only recall two situations where I had to call for uh, uh, AAA or roadside assistance. And, uh, and and both of those were flat tires. That, that was it. They didn't, I didn't have anything uh, major at all. So, you know, do I, do I recommend certain roadside assistance programs? I, I really don't, can't really say on that. I, I, right now I'm using um, uh, Good Sam, the premium plan. It's about 100 bucks a year. But I've never, it's just, that's just, I just call that sleep insurance. That's all. And that way if I'm traveling down the highway and I have a flat on one of these big tires... I can call somebody and get it fixed. Uh, and it says, have you really uh, stuck, broke down in a remote area? No, I've never never had that happen at all. And, it's, and then it asks, any emergency equipment or supplies you would recommend to carry in your vehicle? Uh, carry a mind changer. Uh, that's one thing. If you don't know what that is, uh, you'll have to <laughs> figure it out. Uh, yeah, but as far as, uh, you know, the, the usual stuff, you know, I mean, you need some, you know, a, a toolbox, uh, you know, some duct tape and a few other minor minor things. And then you'll pick up stuff as you travel. Once you start the RVing lifestyle, you'll, you'll start acquiring stuff. And it says, just curious as myself and many of your rangers probably don't travel as much or as often as you do and could use any tips you could provide us with. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for your, this was actually an email and uh <clears throat> yeah but it leads into some other things you know because for those of you that are thinking about starting or just are new to the or being lifestyle or maybe you've been there a while uh don't worry about you're not going to have any more breakdowns with your rv than you are with a car okay i mean it's just, it's just a piece of equipment and it's you know the, the of course, you know, flat tires are, have been my issue two times, but anything else, n not a thing. And as far as going boondocking and being stranded, never had that happen. And I've been a lot of places uh, camping, and I've camped in a lot of different uh, types of vehicles. So, again, that's just something that's on your mind. But, you know, you do need to have you some sleep insurance, which is a good roadside assistance program. You know, most insurance companies have them. I just happen to use uh, Good Sam because uh, uh, they seem to be... They're, they're, they're as good as anybody, but they have some neat features in that premium plan. You know, like if you die and you're in another state, they'll pay for shipping the body back. Uh, if you have a breakdown, they'll pay for motel room or, you know, whatever. If you have to have your vehicle in for service or whatever, they help you there. So it's a, it's just a good program, again. But uh, as far as, you know, RV lifestyle uh, incidents as, composed, as opposed to living in a home, I, I don't think you have any more issues, really, than than that, than living in a sticks and bricks. You know, it's about the same, even though you're traveling down the highway uh, all the time. And uh, you know, again, you you have to maintain your equipment. You know, you got to repack the bearings on your trailer wheels and you know the minor stuff. But on an RV, uh, a motorhome like I've got, it's on an automobile chassis or a truck chassis, and so you don't have to worry about repacking the wheel bearings and stuff. But you still have to, you know, check the air and the tires and all that stuff. So, uh, but, you know, as far as the lifestyle overall, there is no real difference in the lifestyle, RVing lifestyle, 
either in a travel trailer, fifth wheel, or motorhome. The, the, the lifestyle is all the same. Uh, there, there's different floor plans, different lengths, different prices. Uh, that's the biggest difference between the travel trailers, fifth wheels. Well, some of the fifth wheels are very expensive. You know, you start getting triple axles. Yeah, there, that's huge. And, uh, and then you got to have something to tow it with. But for me, back when I was buying motor, I mean, excuse me, travel trailers, you know, small, medium, large, whatever they happened to be, uh, the reason I didn't buy a Class C at that time was because they were very expensive, and I just couldn't, flat couldn't afford them. And I, now I couldn't have afforded this one uh, until I sold my home bases uh, in Texas and New Mexico. I came up with a lump of cash, and that's what this is, okay? That's basically where this came from. Uh, I do prefer the Class C RV over anything I've had in the past, and that could be a a matter of timing because I'm 76 now and when I started this thing I was like 51 or two whatever full time and so yeah this is just a matter of timing and and you know this thing's got a seven foot ceiling so you know you can stretch out a little bit and move around and you don't feel so cramped it's got big window here and big window there you know I mean it's it's okay it's a great layout for one person for two people and be a little crowded maybe uh, for two people and a dog and whatever, you know, then it starts getting, you, you know, you, you've only got so much usable space. But what's it like or what's it been like to live uh, in, in a small home, which this has been for me for over 25 years? Well, it, once you get used to it, it's like getting used to a sharp stick in your eye. You know, you leave it there long enough and you'll, you'll, you'll like it. And, uh, but no, I just kind of over the years got used to it. I've gotten, you know, used to small beds and small dining tables and small kitchens and you know small closets and stuff like that and and it uh, actually i feel uncomfortable uh, even in my home base at in uh, fort clark springs texas which is about 400 square feet it's got a separate bedroom separate living room separate kitchen big bathroom and stuff and and i didn't feel comfortable i, I stayed in it i lived in it for about a month and then moved back to the class c motorhome which was which is under a cover there at the home and uh, it's got a full hookup right there for the RV. And so I just moved back into the home. Why? Well, because I just feel more comfortable here. I mean, God, God you know, you've been, I've been doing it for, for years. It'd be like keeping a mouse in a cage for a year or two or three and, and feeding them and taking care of them and then opening them and, and letting them out. They, they'll probably come right back. You know what I mean? If you give them enough time, they'll come back home. You know, so, uh, you know, for it, it, everything's individual. I, I, I see channels that recommend or try to recommend different types of RVs for people, but it's all up to you. The whole thing, it's just like anything you've ever done, the color of the car you drive, the color of the jacket you buy, uh, the, whatever, you know, and, and so just go into RVing with that in mind. And as far as uh, uh, things to take uh, for safety and, and uh, hazards and stuff on the road, you know, just use common sense. You know, I, mean, I could say a lot of smart sounding things, but the fact of the matter is all of you people are smart enough. If you've lived long enough to watch this video, you can probably figure it out. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and I give people credit for being a lot smarter than, than a lot of people do. I mean, they're, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. And if you're out there on the road and you need something, you'll figure it out. And that's the best way. Then that way you don't forget it. As far as, you know, where to go and what time of the year, again, that's all individual. A lot of people go to Quartzsite, Arizona this time of the year. Uh, I did a couple of times. I won't go back. Why? I don't need to. I mean, I got a place that's warm in the winter down around Brackettville, Texas. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll probably be there every winter as long as I'm here on this planet. But having said that, thank you for your comment, whoever that was. Uh, it was an email, rather. And thank you much. But uh, this is just a quick little RVing type generalization uh, video to uh, talk to you guys about uh, what to do in case of emergency. They do, do the normal stuff, you know, call 1-800-COME-FIX. You know, that's it. You know, I don't, I didn't even, I, I never even worried about changing a tire. Now here's the catch 22, two, two. the catch 22 on that is you have to have a cell phone signal. Okay. Now you get out there in New Mexico and in any state, for that matter, in the boonies or in the mountains, uh, you may be somewhere where you don't have a uh, cell phone signal. And uh, knock on wood, I've never had that happen where there's a combination of no cell phone signal and an emergency situation. I hope I never do. 
I mean, I try to avoid now uh, going in areas where there's no cell phone signal for several reasons. One is uh, I, I like to be able to watch YouTube videos, and that's my entertainment. And, uh, you know, and I, I, wherever I am, I am. And, and you know, it's like you know, you're driving your home. You're, for me, I, I, I'm driving my home. And uh, wherever I'm parked, the front yard and the backyard are different. Sometimes I do uh, forget uh, where I am. Because sometimes I move around in the summers, maybe once every week or two, and I look out the window and where in the hell am I, you know? But that's a good feeling for me. So anyway, guys, enjoy your, uh, I know it's cool weather all most of the United States now, particularly the north of Texas and then going east, pretty cold. But uh, keep your powder dry and, and uh, keep yourself warm and keep your health. And uh, yeah, as far as RVing, just go into it with an open mind. And take it one day at a time. Use common sense and good judgment. And you got it, guys. Thumbs up. Carpe diem. Adios. Bye-bye. Buy anything you want anytime. If you think about it, use the Amazon link. Drink plenty of water. Stretch, walk, stand guard at the door of your mind. And what else? If you're in an RV or you're going to do the RV lifestyle, I think you'll enjoy it. I mean, I'm not recommending it. I'm just saying that uh, for me, it's been good. So uh, I, I assume that it probably will be good for other people too. But have a good day. And I'm fixing to read a book here in a little bit. Big day, huh? Anyway, adios, guys. Bye-bye.